Hello, we hope you're doing well. Welcome back to a very exciting episode of CSK News. And I say that because there are so many stories in today's episode. So do a favor, if you guys want to skip around, I will timestamp every story down below as usual. I hope you guys all enjoy though. Let's hop into our first story. Obviously in biggest news out there, in biggest uproar and excitement, we do have Yanko being signed MIBR as their new coach. They got rid of their old coach, guys. They brought in Yanko. If you guys do not know, he's actually an analyst or formerly an analyst and apparently uh, will not be doing that anymore in the future. But he also has never coached before as to what we know in CSGO. He was a former CS as well as a CSGO player. Nothing too extreme, but I could not be happier for a guy out there. I think the overwhelming response out there is excitement for the guy and such a big announcement, especially if this is a first official coaching role, which we do believe it is, to be announced to MIBR's roster is absolutely insane. So now you have three Brazilians, you have two Americans, you have a Serbian, and what does that make? Does it make a top tier American team? We're going to find out sometime soon if he can actually turn this team around in time for the major. Now it gives him just over a month though to do so, and I cannot wait to see what he does for the team and also very funny as well we had e-league tweet out uh, back in late july as well at e-league premiere his predictions when it was actually liquid versus mibr it was very funny to see all the analysts actually went with liquid and he was the one guy to go with mibr you can probably assume by then just about a week ago he knew he was going to be signed to them so kind of funny uh, foreshadowing there that no one could have ever guessed and also on top of that uh, he did actually post on twitter thanking everyone but it was also very cool to see that no one knew about this ahead of time especially such a big move out there yanko a very well-known analyst and of course mibr one of the best american teams out there it's very surprising especially in today's csgo news that no one broke the story early so congrats to mibr congrats to yanko i cannot wait to see what the team does in the future and that was in super exciting news and hopefully it puts them in the right direction on top of that though i do want to talk about jason r if you guys do not know jason r he chose a while ago to go actually be a full-time streamer formerly a pro csgo player i guess you could say still a semi-pro csgo player but he kind of took the clg hazed route he knows that streaming csgo is going to be his livelihood and unfortunately enough for him apparently he's been banned as of right now we're not really sure how long that ban was uh he actually was banned a couple days ago his only tweet ever since and on screen for all of you he didn't say exactly what clip got him banned how long his ban will be all he of course said was the hashtag free jr nasty so i'm going to support that movement guys but i did get a clip out there potentially of what actually got jason R banned. now we first did this with mo tv and his band then anomaly and his band uh this clip is apparently what actually got jason R banned uh he went on a bit of a rant out there about females uh, in the scene, in the gaming scene, and uh, here's what he had to say. <laughs> so quite honestly, I'm not going to share my, I guess, my my favoritism towards him. Obviously, what he said was probably wrong. It was comparable to what MoTV and Anomaly said in some sense. But again, those are all three very uh, distinct circumstances. So what do you guys think about this? But if MoTV and Anomaly got 30-day bans, I can see this probably being a 30-day ban as well. Hopefully, if not, if not shorter. So unfortunately enough, that is apparently the clip floating around that got Jason R banned. I hope to see him back anytime soon because, yes, that is his livelihood. That's how he actually earns a living nowadays. And it's sad to see a clip like that which of course again i'm not defending the guy it was obviously a, a decently terrible clip it's to get him banned on twitch for such a long time if it is 30 days hopefully sooner than that but yes that is the clip apparently that got jason r banned on top of that though i do want to talk about very briefly i know there's a lot of drama out there in the csgo scene which i'm, I'm not going to touch on right now but one of those actual pieces of drama was of course the backlash uh, from pro players in the community towards people like thorn you might have thought i was going to say a different name there but no mostly towards thorn Thorne actually did the liberty to actually post a video about the recent backlash. Now, I'm sure you guys are aware, a little TLDW. If you guys, too long, you didn't watch the video because, of course, it was a lengthy one. Of course, you're very well aware of Thorne's standpoint on many arguments out there, things he says on Twitter, on the analyst desk, can maybe be a bit brash, a bit too far, and he actually made sure to clarify. TLDW, guys, the whole goal of the video is to actually pitch the idea it's a persona. So I'm not really sure if I actually liked him making the video because all this time I wasn't really sure if he was acting, if he was telling the truth. And the drama will continue, of course, because some of the things he says, he says with, with, such, with such backing, you actually think he does mean it. But the whole goal of the video is to show you guys that what he says is just banter. It's a persona. It's an act he puts on towards these pro players. Obviously, most recently with Zeus responding and Snacks responding pretty vividly and extensively on Twitter, it kind of brought a lot of backlash towards Thorne. He made sure to make a video about that guy. But also, in the future, I might touch on other drama out there revolving around other analysts. But for now, I'm not going to add fuel to the fire from either side. Um, but yeah, a lot of drama going on right now between pro players and analysts who analyze the game. 
Uh, it, a lot of budding heads out there, which is kind of sad to see. Yeah, you guys know what time it is. I do want to quickly shout out to my sponsor, guys. This is my last sponsor video for a long time. I promise you guys, there's not too many sponsors out there in the CS scene anymore. But if you guys do want to trade or now buy skins, CS Money is actually a great sponsor. My link is down below. I would appreciate it very much if you guys click it, but don't feel like you have to. If you guys are not going to do anything, though, if you have nothing to comment down below, do me one favor. My manager over at CS Money, who actually offers me this sponsorship, her name is Juliana. So if you guys want to just comment anything down below, just say, Hey Juliana or click the link down below. Thank you guys and now back to crazy Jake You know what? I wasn't gonna do this, but I'll give my two cents right now There is so much hate out there and the one thing you should not do is ever acknowledge it And I'll just say this to show you guys the amount of hate out there in the comments of the people that watch your content The people that go to my videos and watch it either to dislike the video or comment bad things That really doesn't matter at all But the people that take it a step farther if you guys watched my last video It's a glitch and bug series for CSGO The ultimate goal is to expose uh, current bugs and glitches in the current game of CSGO go or at least in matchmaking or wingman and I left my email in the description you know to see if you guys want to send me clips or any glitches or bugs and someone signed me up for a couple inappropriate websites so that's how that's how weird people are and toxic people are and that's the community we are currently in in CSGO but all I got to say for now I'm not going to touch this in, the, in, in, any, in any time in the near future, maybe maybe next week or I don't know. We'll, we'll see what comes up. But that's the community we're currently in, guys. It's a community that I love. You guys are awesome. But there's definitely a few of you out there that are, that are just weird. And there's also a few more of you out there that are just plain mean and really do push people away that you probably shouldn't be pushing so hard. And also, as of right now, we have no signed contract, but news and updates for Tempo Storm's roster. It does seem in pretty big news that Zaiwu has been playing with Tempo Storm for a few qualifiers now. The most recent one was actually a Star Series qualifier. It was actually Tempo Storm against the Imperial. Ironically enough, I could talk about the Imperial in a second here, but it was actually him in place of RPK on that roster. If you guys first remember, it was a while ago. I think it was maybe early last month. It was actually Tempo Storm who lost Lola and Chetty. They brought in Happy and RPK. Obviously, two ex-teammates there to actually trial for them. I think it was for a DreamHack tournament. They failed to qualify with them. And it seems, as of right now, they have replaced Happy with the up-and-coming star, Zai Wu. Now, no contract's been signed yet. I told you guys earlier as well, we can expect a contract signed. Zai Wu to probably sign with a team out there sometime during the month of September. And I literally just now realize it's only August. I am so sorry, guys. But again, sometime by September, he was expecting to sign a team. And that new team could very well be Tempo Storm. They're still trying to play together. But what's very sad to see as well, the two Frenchmen, RPK and Happy, apparently Zai will be replacing him on that roster. It's unofficial as of right now if Zai will continue with them, if they'll continue with Zai Wu. But that's the updates on the upcoming French star, Zai Wu. Where he's going to go, as of right now, we aim in the direction of Tempo Storm, but nothing's guaranteed. And it does seem going forward, speaking of the Imperial roster, there have actually added two new members, Poon and Haji. And also, unfortunately enough, I'm not going to mention anything in the background. You're not going to get any drama out of me right now, guys. Apparently, it was actually the Imperial who cut their former member, Loba. Loba was actually with them for less than two weeks' time. It's been pretty clear as of right now, he was actually kind of a risk-adverse player when it comes to actually acquiring sponsorships. At least that's what the team owner made clear via Twitter and some deleted tweets out there. It seemed that Loba was a bit of a risk for the team, and he understands that. So from what I get from the background of Loba, he wasn't necessarily a player who actually wanted to go pro necessarily or actually wanted to commit to a team. He had no problem with being cut by this, but there were allegations out there as to exactly why he was cut. It seems obvious now via his Twitter page that he was a risk for actually acquiring a new sponsor. Uh, the Imperial team has actually gone forward with two new players, and that will be Poon and Haji, and that's the roster that actually beat Tempo Storm a couple days ago and actually swept them in a best of three. So the Imperial going forward has seen a vast amount of changes over the past couple weeks uh, with Esperanto, I guess you could say, leaving the roster and Crystal staying, and then it was actually Crystal leaving and then Tensky leaving and Esperanto coming back. Back. A lot of, uh, I guess you could say, rumors out there as to who they're going to join. I uh, have joined that roster officially. As of right now, it will be uh, Poon and Haji joining and actually taking those places of Crystal and Tensky. We'll see what the roster does in the future. It's definitely a promising roster and a promising, I guess you could say, few results they've had in the past two months. What's going to go on in the future, though? That's the big question mark. And also, speaking of Zai Wu shooting off that last story, he actually uh, did win FPO for the third time in a row. And it was actually very cool to see. I want to showcase Face it, doing a very good job here. They actually offered him and a friend a free all expense paid trip to London for winning FPL three times in a row. So face it, doing a great job over there. And they also are the, are the stars of our next story, which is kind of an embarrassing one for a few pro players out there. And as of right now, the story is only rumor. So I'm actually going to link Lollipops uh, and also face it Mikey's Twitters down below for the current story. And that's actually a new Namiga roster. If you guys don't know Namiga, you can definitely say a lower tier roster out there. But Lollipop, obviously formerly of Flipside Tactics, he was actually benched on that roster and definitely a player out there who put, has put a bit of some impressive online results. So a guy I'm not going to definitely diss in terms of skill. He's actually looking very good. He never played at land with flip side tactics, never got the chance before they kind of 
halfway disbanded. They lost Blade to Gambit, and of course, they also benched a couple other players over there. So Lollipop apparently did join Namiga. It was actually between two teams, uh, the good the good job, I think, and also Namiga. He chose Namiga to join them, and ironically enough, it does seem over the past couple of days, only allegations right now. Lollipop continues to defend himself on Twitter, but it was actually Face It Mikey coming forward with a couple tweets on screen for all of you, alleging that two Namiga teammates, it was actually Fast and Lollipop. Ironically enough, I say that because Lollipop is a new Namiga teammate of Fast, we're apparently trying to boost fast in FPL. So uh, as of right now, the results have been that uh, it was actually uh, Brokey was one of the players who was actually playing against these two. And apparently he was on fast team. Fast was throwing the games and vice versa uh, for Lollipop. And so apparently Brokey being involved with that, he's actually going to be put through to FPL. Alongside that, Fast will be permabanned from FPL. And they're going to look into Lollipop in terms of investigation because Lollipop has actually taken to Twitter several times now to defend himself. He said he actually did not uh, deny his teammate um, on purpose. He's denied his teammate Fast on purpose because Fast sometimes trolls while playing. We're going to find out the details of the situation very soon. Hopefully share it with you guys in the next episode. But as of right now, it's not looking good for Team Namiga and their newest member, Lollipop, as well as their current member uh, on top of that Fast, apparently coercing to actually boost each other into FPL, which is kind of a sad story if true. But again, we don't know the full story quite yet. We'll have those details very shortly. And some notable mentions for our last two stories for today's episode of CSGO News. I do briefly want to touch on this, and you guys can feel free to comment on this down below. I'd love to hear your opinions because because I think all of us together know a lot more than just one of us, especially one like me. I, I don't know too much about the situation, and I do quickly want to thank you guys for all the toxicity out there in the community. I am definitely lucky on this channel to have a lot of great people. Over time, especially if you guys noticed over the course of the last two months, uh, the kind of positivity on this channel, and luckily enough, you guys have just gotten better and better and better. Um, I definitely had some hard times in the past, and you guys have definitely seen probably the, the rough points of this community, how toxic we can be. I'm not going to deny that. Every community has toxicity. But this one especially, and it definitely comes around this next story as we had Mega Man take the Twitter and Reddit to talk about he will now be casting any event out there for free, as long as they play for his travel and his board, which if you guys don't know, it's obviously a steal for a decent caster out there. It's been very tough to see a, a, once, a once upon a time a rising caster, which was Mega Man, and definitely was pretty good at casting. It, it, definitely a, a career choice that not many people can actually afford to choose, and he chose it for quite some time, was doing some decent events back in the day, but it seems like he's really been shut off and put on some sort of blacklist, and no one knows exactly the reasoning why. Now, there were allegations, there was rumors, there was talk about exactly why maybe his personality, the way he came off kind of arrogant and not too polite to other, other casters or other, other, uh, other talent at events was what put him off. But there's other allegations out there as well as to something deeper happening. And I would love to hear his perspective on exactly what that was. Just come forward, come clean it, exactly why you've been shut off from all these events. Because I would love to see a talent like this actually show up again. It's definitely deserved by now. It's been way too long. And that was in our first story. But also on a lighter note out there, kind of a funnier note as well. We do have IEM Shanghai going on currently, guys. And it was just our best team out there. If you guys didn't see their house tour, I'll try and link it down below. The Greyhounds house tour with Dick Stacy, And they show up in these jerseys. Probably, arguably the best jerseys we'll ever see in CSGO. Uh, on top of that though as well, kind of unfortunate, we had IEM showcasing what might be the future of Dick Stacy, and that is just he's going to be Stacy. Uh, unfortunately enough for censorship reasons, of course there's a younger audience out there watching CSGO. IEM has censored out D-I-C-K. You can no longer call him Dick Stacy, guys. It's just a female version of Stacy. So I hope you guys on today's episode of CSGO News. Thank you all for watching. Seriously, you guys have been amazing. And huge shout out to CS Money. If you guys want to give it one last click down below, go check out CS Money. I, I cannot thank them enough for a sponsor. I also, by the way, I'm doing tons of giveaways this week, next week, the week after, uh, not only for the Esports Talk channel, but also I'm partnering up with Raffle One as well as CS Money. I'm taking some of their payment and doing tons of giveaways. If you guys want to participate, they'll be on Twitter. So that'll be linked down below. Come and join, guys. I love giving away some skins. Hope you guys all enjoy. I will see y'all later this week. And uh, goodbye, guys.